Hi, and welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Now this channel is all about budget, and it's my Christmas jumper, a cheap, smart price jumper. Now, it's all about budget, getting something as cheap as possible, it's gonna give a decent sound like, and I know a lot of people still collecting CDs, uh, and you know, wanna get a CD player maybe, don't know whether to buy a new one or second hand one, I've got a video about that, I mean, it's your choice, obviously a new one hopefully should last longer, you're not gonna know how long a second hand one's gonna last, but, there's some real bargains second hand, some real cheap ones going about, so you may not be too worried. If that conks out in six months' time, just go and buy another one. It's still going to be much cheaper than getting a new one. Today's the turn of the Denon DV 1930. Now, this is a, a DVD player, and it looks like a DVD player. I've got some DVD players that look a bit like a CD player, but this typically looks like and feels like a DVD player that you would have bought a few years back. What I'm going to do is the normal stuff. I may have been a bit... Uh, over critical with that Sansu one I did uh, uh, the first video on this CD versus DVD kind of video test obviously it's going to be more as I pick them up as I go along I've just got six at the moment I've been a bit over critical for what it was you know what I mean for what it is it's still a you know a decent little player like I say because I had some better ones here obviously would have cost a lot more back then new than that would have cost that would have been in a stack system these would have been separates and you know some decent makes here and decent uh, units so I may be a bit overcritical there. So if you're thinking still about buying that Sansui, you know, you know, it's not a bad player, like, but there is better to be had and for the same kind of money as well, really, second hand. Like I say, this is, this is a DVD player. We're only going to listen to the CD part of it. Going to take no notice of the DVD video, how good or how bad that is, though. This is supposed to be pretty good in this one anyway. We're going to be sticking to the audio only on this. Right, OK, first of all, we're going to have a look inside. People like looking inside. So there's a few pictures there. Don't ask me what digital analog converters it's got, anything like that. You know, if you want to have a little look around on the neck yourself, what transport it's got, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's probably a little bit beyond me. Not really that interested. At the end of the day, I want to buy it as cheap as possible, put it on the channel and give you my review. And hopefully it's going to sound really good as well. So you can nip out and get it, so to speak. You know, I'll put it on your short list of ones to look out for, etc. If we look at the back, as you can see, there's an host of sockets at the back for the videos, for 5.1, all that kind of stuff. But we're going kind to of be concentrating just on the audio part of this DVD player. And there's the audio sockets at the back. You've got your left and right, you've got your coax out, and you've got your digital out. We're going to whip around the front. Here's a picture of the front of the unit. You may not be able to pick it up so much on this table. The camera's a little bit back, but that's what the front looks like anyway. Now, what does this go for on eBay? I picked up this particular unit with the remote control for £12.48. Yet, I picked up a similar model, the model below this, which I'm not going to put in review. The model below this, I picked up at a charity shop for six pound that's upstairs now i didn't get the remote without one for six pound but with this one this is the only dvd stroke cd player test items i've got here that I actually got the remote with it so the remote come with it and that's up to you 12 pound 48 with the remote i think it was about six quid postage the last one sold on ebay for 17 pound and that come with the remote as well it's up to you like some of these players you may pay an extra tenner to get the remote. You may pay exactly the same with or without the remote, bid up kind of thing, all that. Uh, you know, if you see a nice one, they ain't got the remote, you can probably pick up the remote for £10 or something like that if someone's got a spare remote or a compatible remote. It's really up to you. Do you really need the remote? Again, that's up to you how far away you are sitting from the uh, CD or DVD player, what buttons it's got on the front, all that kind of thing. And, you know, like I say, I would go for where you've got all, you know, look around for one, you've got most of the controls, if not all the controls on the front, uh, so you can control it if you didn't have that remote control. I'm going to do my normal stuff here, where I'm going to eject and play the CD and how long it takes, because I know some people like to see how fast and slow these are, and this one's a little bit on the slow side, so if I just get rid of my bits of paper here, and put that over there, I think I've got a disc in there, no I haven't, let's eject it. A typical DVD kind of drawer here, you know, nothing fancy, just a normal kind of, nothing, no springy mechanism, nothing like that inside. No nice, you know, kind of like um, extra touches, anything like that. Very basic. So first of all, we're going to play just normal DVD, normal CD, get a bit carried away with DVD. So we'll close it and we'll see how long it takes for it to register that it's found the tracks on the particular CD. This player is a little bit on the slow side. There you go, it's found the 12 tracks. So if we play the first one, and what we're going to do here is just skip a track again to so cut the tracks just to show you. As you can see, it's not the fastest, it's not slow, slow, but it's not the fastest. So if we skip a track now, but I'll tell you when I press the button now. And now. I do apologise for my phone, and once more. 
there you go so what we'll do we'll inject that dvd cd cd you mustn't forget mick we're playing cds not dvds because i can see the dvd on the front and it's a little bit on the slow side so the next thing we're going to do now is put a cdr in it and pretty much the same now cdrs and dvds apparently dvds are pressed where CDRs are burnt. And I remember years ago having a PlayStation 1 and used to play copy games on it and all that kind of stuff. I think many, many people did. And it seemed to wear the lasers out a lot quicker if you was playing CDRs rather than the actual original disc. I don't know if that's the case these days with CD and DVD players. Just something maybe to think about and have a little look about. You know, if you're going to burn your own CDs, will it actually wear the laser out quicker than actually having the original DVD? But anyway, let's go to this. So it's playing this one. So we're going to skip a track here. And now, and once more, now, there you go. So if we just let that play, there you can see the speed of it. So we're going to inject that. And hopefully that gives you some kind of idea of how fast and slow this particular unit is. Right, so how did it actually sound? Before we get to that, I just want to bring up a couple of more things you just want to be a bit wary about, maybe, if you're buying a DVD player as your CD player. Right, first things first, like I said before in a previous video, make sure you've got some kind of display so you know exactly where you are, uh, what track, how far the track, all that kind of stuff. And make sure you've got some kind of control. If you haven't got the remote with it, you've got some kind of control at the front there. You can skip tracks and maybe you know, fast forward the track and rewind that kind of thing if you need to do that but at least you can go to the next track or previous track that kind of thing remote comes in handy for maybe entering a track number so you can skip from one to ten without pressing that button nine times and things like that so that may come in handy with the uh, remote control also you're going to notice on this one you've got a little flashing light here hdmi it means the hdmi cable is not plugged in i'm not saying all these dvd players are going to have that little flashing light but it may be saying it's going to bug you, um, you know, so just bear that in mind as well. You may be able to go into the menu. I haven't tried it on this one, to be honest with you. One thing I didn't try. Uh, and actually do the video to comps it or something like that. And that may actually turn this HDMI uh, little flashing lead uh, missing uh, indicator on. Not that all these DVD players have got HDMI. I think this is the only one I've got that's got an HDMI output. The others are just normal comps it and super video and all that kind of thing. But just bear that in mind as well. Also, we're taking the output, I'm going to show you the sockets again, from the audio out sockets, not the 5.1 surround socket, sockets at the back of phono uh, sockets, uh, connection, shall I say. Uh, we're going to take it from the actual audio. Just be careful. On some of these players, you may have a little button on the front that's got surround and other effects. Make sure it's on the, the effects is on off. Or you may have to go into the menu. Uh, so you may have to link this up to the TV. Go into the menu and see... Make sure the effects have turned off on the menu so you may well need the remote control for that something you may not be able to do on the front on some of these dvd players so just something to bear in mind so we're going to go on to the sound and know uh, and how good this player is i play a variety of tracks as you probably well well known by now shakara uh, gloria estefan dina carroll you know kind of commercial kind of stuff where some of these CDs and maybe and these records are kind of like put out for radio and that's how it sounds good on the radio, that kind of thing. Where also I've got some jazz CDs now picking them up as well. And they're more thought out of the sound stage and the instrument placement, just more thought out on them and gives you much more of a feel of how maybe something like this sounds. And maybe pick out a good player from maybe not such a good player, so that kind of thing. So that, that's helped me a bit there, listening to a lot of jazz on these, like where some of these instruments are really, really placed nice and really, really focused and really, really sound nice and detailed. So, you know, this here, the top end, I found was nice, really, really nice, detailed top end. And I liked it, like I do like it when they've hitting the cymbals and, tss, and stuff like that, where it goes on like decays there, rather than just a, you know, a shut off, it's tss, and it sounds nice, it's picking up the detail. Sounds really, really nice in this machine. Just topped by one other machine in my test, which I'll come to uh, when the test progresses. Kind of hold that back as a little bit of, maybe not a surprise, probably guess which one it is anyway. But um, one of them just outshone it on that. Just, just had a little bit more detail than this. Just outshone it pretty much in every department, just a little bit. But this is still a good player. This is still an engaging, nice sounding player. The only thing I don't like about it, it's a bit DVD looking kind of thing. And 
it's slow, a little bit slow picking up the tracks, you know what I mean, putting the CD in, a little bit slow. But if you can live with that, it's a nice machine, it's a nice machine. A nice open sound stage, very nice and open, spacious kind of sound stage, really, really nice. If you like an open, spacious sound stage, this is nice. It's not over spacious, you know, it doesn't get, you know, to say it's all of a sudden you're a big old, too big for where you're listening. It's not like that, but it's a nice open sound stage. Pianos sounded very, very nice. Sounded very, very nice. Sounded like a proper piano. Sounded really, really nice. The keys it in the, the strings and that sounded really, really nice. The sax sounded nice and we're in the trumpet and with that decay as well. Really, really made them sound nice and believable. Vocals were nice, controlled and smooth, male and female, got no harshness to it at all, no sibilance. Sounded really, really nice and controlled the vocals. Nicely focused, this is really nice sounding machine. Sounded nice and focused. Like I say, just top by one other machine here, I think. There's not a lot between them, but I just thought the other one just add it uh, when it comes to the actual sound department, the overall sound department, just, just add it for me. But this is still a nice machine, very engaging. Wanted to get involved, the bass was nice and controlled and detailed, bass, guitar and drums. Sounded really, really nice, you know what I mean? Really, really nice overall sounding machine. Quite a neutral kind of sounding machine, no emphasis on bass or treble or anything like that. It's quite a nice neutral kind of sound. All in all, it's alive, it's a live machine. You know, it felt really alive, engaging, involving, so much so, like I think I mentioned in the other video, that you know, I felt going out there and getting the old drumsticks out, which were chopsticks from my missus. I won't tell her I use these, she's going mad. But yeah, felt like getting them out, and I was tapping me knee, I was getting involved. Really, really nice sounding machine. So this is one of them where these come out. It's just one other machine I pulled these out for. And I'll, I'll come to that at a later stage, that'll be up and coming. But overall, you're not going to pay a lot for this machine, £12, something like that on eBay, £15, £20, £30 maybe you may pay for it with a remote control. Well to me that's thirty where sorry, £30 well spent. It's a nice sounding machine. Drawbacks, like I said, draw coming out a bit slow, slow picking up the tracks when you put the CD, not not by a fast amount, but maybe a little bit on the slow side for some people. And a bit DVD looking kind of machine, but it's a silver one, it's like Melwell go in with your system if you've got a silver uh, fronted system rather than a black unit. So all in all, I definitely recommend this, if you're looking at this model, uh, definitely, definitely recommended. So that's it, that's this one done, and we've just got a few more to go, until then, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.